So uh, when the characters in a new crime drama are unusual as the cases are solved, you know you got yourself a hit show. And that's why ABC's new crime drama, I'm so obsessed with this show, Will Trent. Oh, my God. <laughs> Will Trent is this year's big breakout series. I'm not kidding. I love this show, Tan Fam. So... Actor Ramon Rodriguez plays the detective Will Trent, the beloved lead character of author Karen Slaughter's best-selling books. Will is the Georgia Bureau of Investigation star agent who likes to dress in polished three-piece suits, drive a Porsche, and keep around a sidekick chihuahua named Betty. <laughs> But his quirky appearance as a detective is deceiving armor, hiding the scars of his traumatic childhood. And that's a part of the twist as he struggles to get to know himself and also solve the cases of others. Take a look. Murdered teenage girl. I didn't need to read the crimes. I told him I'd bring my best. Look at you with your three-piece suit like every day's your wedding day. Yeah, on my funeral. Two people were attacked. Something's not right. Somebody was carried out of the house. Put out an Amber Alert. There's a kidnapping. Homicide and a kidnapping. It's a lot for a Monday. <laughs> Please, Karen Fan, welcome actor, writer, producer, and the star of ABC's new hit show, Raymond Rodriguez! <laughs> Trying to get your Will Trent on. I see a little throwback <laughs> I vibe. See a little throwback, I see a little throwback vibe. Congratulations on this. I'm telling you, I was hooked first episode. Hooked. Mm. I was with someone just the other night and they said, You know what show I'm obsessed with? I said, Will Trent. How did you know? I said, It's true. Um, people love the series, love the books. I think it was around, what, 35 million copies sold, 24 languages, 120 countries. Yeah. So yeah. no pressure. No. Right? <laughs> No pressure to bring him to life, huh? Yeah, you know, we're lucky. It's lucky when you get to have an incredible source material. Karen Slaughter, the author, yes. wrote these incredible books. But yeah, there's some pressure, no <laughs> doubt, stepping into Will Trent, knowing, you know, uh, the history, the people that follow, the fans that are really love these books in this series. I wanted to make sure I did it the best I could, you know? And, and the fact that they came to me, you know, a, a Puerto Rican from New York. <laughs> They came to you because they knew you were going to make it a hit. They weren't crazy. Yeah, Listen. yeah. no, I, I, I really appreciated that. That was one of the things that drew me to the character. Yeah. It was something very different. It was a real challenge for me. But it's, yeah, it, it's been a lot of fun stepping in this, this complicated guy, as he's you mentioned. He's a complicated yeah. guy, but he's a guy, you know, you want to know more about. And I think that's what makes the payoff so good each yeah. episode. We start to pull back the exactly. thread of who this guy is. And I thought, this is why the show is so unique. Because I grew up, you know, watching crime shows. I'm like, I don't really right. know anything about Columbo's childhood. Right. And I was like, right. you don't know anything about Quincy other than that right. he was an MD. Right. But now right. you get to know the guy who's solving and what's motivating him. Yeah, that's something that was really interesting for me. And I think the showrunners and the writers as well. It's like, here's this incredibly complicated character who kind of navigates the world in his own very unique way. Yeah. He has a very unique perspective, how he looks at crime scenes, and we start figuring out a lot of that is because of his childhood. Yeah. Again, the foster care system, an orphan. Um, it's those sort of themes of resilience, mm -hmm. this guy's spirit. Um, and he's got a big heart, you know, yeah. like besides being great at his job, we noticed in the pilot, of the, you know, the first episode of the show, he rescues this chihuahua. Right. <laughs> Betty, who's become okay. a huge hit. Did you hear him? Yeah. Betty. Betty. Yeah. I, 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 I mean... Get, Betty flies in to tape, right? Betty flies in to tape. Where does Betty live again? Florida. So Betty... <laughs> this chihuahua has a better life than I'm any of us. I'm telling you. So Betty flies in from Florida to yeah. tape yeah, the she, show. Right. She comes in. I, I've kind of developed... She's had this whole entourage of chihuahuas that she rolls with. <laughs> Her own trailer. She got her posse. She got her posse. No, you know, no icon. She's a diva. <laughs> She's a little diva, Betty. I love the comments on Instagram about Betty. People said Betty is the best actor who is her double. Betty should get paid extra since she does her own stunts. <laughs> so 
Yeah. I yeah. mean... The fans have gone crazy for Betty. They love her, and why not? Honestly, she's incredibly lovable, yeah. um, and she's a great performer. I laugh, because she honestly... She comes in, like you said, she lives the best life. They fly her in, God. she does her scene, she gets treats for every great thing yeah. she does, and then she's gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And there she is. Yeah. But, I mean, listen, you make a dynamic duo, but I think also in addition to having such a cute co-star, it really is your personal background that I feel you, you feel in this character. I know, as you talked about, your own childhood, yeah. kind of figuring out life. We don't always make the right decisions, right. and sometimes we get tempted by the wrong side of the road. Sure. But you've always dared to be different. And yeah. while Will Trent is obviously a completely different person, yeah. um, I think to play this character, such a complicated character, it took an actor with such a, a real background. Mm. And that's you. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, again, I, I grew up here in New York City in the Lower East Side. Look at this kid. <laughs> First of all, let me, there's so many things I could determine about this child. First of all, no shirt, b-boy stance, uh. with a skateboard. Yeah. Sk Listen, yeah, he yeah. was a he was a handful. But you know, it's, and that's that's you know, 1989, uh, and uh, you know, in the Lower East Side of New York, it was com it was complicated. Yeah, it, it was is. wild. It still you is know, it complicated. Still is. Look at this guy. And so you know, the things I I'm so grateful, honestly, to be able to come from that and yeah. to live there and to have those experiences. I feel like all that was and a single mom mm. who raised us yeah. alone. I mean, you know. We look at all these like superhero movies. Mm -hmm. I don't. I had my incredible superhero model of a mother that did incredible work. Um, really laid down a path and showed me, you know, what uh, what it is to be a man. And that's yeah. kind of amazing coming from a fatherless home to have a woman have yeah. to show me what it is to be a man. Right. Yeah. That's why I love this show. Dare to be different. And, and she challenged you to do that, and you have coming up. Ramon's mission, helping the people of Puerto Rico in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria, plus how his love of basketball led to his big break in the business next. Oh. DEA asked me to light a fire under you while I was here. They've been breathing down our necks for an ID on CK. I'm meeting him tomorrow. Wait, for real? Yeah. Dante's bringing me along for this week's cash drop-off. Well, contact me when you got a name I can run with. I gotta get something to bring to this dinner. Are you really bonded with the community here, huh? That's the job. I've been going undercover since I was a kid. Foster care. They drop you off some new, scary place. You mimic folks around you in order to survive. We are back. That was a clip from ABC new hit crime drama, Will Trent, with Ramon Rodriguez, the star. You know, I was listening to that clip. He talked about bonding with the community, that's the job. You wrote a screenplay called Manchild. Um, writing it, you said, made you realize you needed to reconnect with your father who lives in Puerto Rico. And it started this path of healing, connection, community. Yeah. It's his storyline, it's in your storyline, it's right. in the philanthropic work you did after Hurricane Maria, yeah. going in to help people there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talk about dare to be different. Your humanity is so beautiful to hear and see you talk about, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, no, yeah. I think, you know, that process of writing, um, you know, visiting memories and stories and really putting together my life story, which I really wasn't aware of. My father wasn't around growing up. Yeah. And so there was just gaps in my life that I wasn't, I didn't know what happened and I didn't know where parts of me came from. And so as I started writing, um, it led me to this, I had this epiphany one day where I realized um, if something were to happen with, to my father, and I hadn't seen him in like over 12 years, and I had a lot of anger and resentment, all these issues that were sort of churning up inside of me, and if I didn't go see him or do something about it, and if something were to happen to him, I live with that. Yeah. I live with the fact that I didn't do anything uh. about it. Um, and I didn't want to repeat that pattern, and so I showed up at his doorstep in the middle of Puerto Rico, in the mountains of Puerto Rico, and uh, it was a pretty powerful day where we just spent the afternoon together and he was there sitting with his guitar in hand in the oh. mountains of Puerto Rico. He's a musician. Listen, I, yeah. I love this story and I love that you shared it because I, I've been honest with our audience. I was raised by my stepdad. I say the dad that God meant for me to have, my biological father. When I was reading about your relationship, 
I'll be honest, it's something I have not done yet, but I've had to ask myself that very question of how do you heal and what is the olive branch, if there is one? And I thought it was beautiful that you shared. Yeah, I mean, what's fascinating is, at least for me and my experience, and I know other people relate to it, it's like when I went and saw him, it wasn't this sort of picture, per, you know, I actually went up there to sort of tell him how I really felt. Right, I right. wanted to go and like- You're like, this is what you like, missed let me in know the- what, how, you know, <laughs> Right, right, right. You know, this is what you couldn't do, well, I'm gonna tell you off. Right. And, I, and it's funny, I got there and it was this small old man. And it oh. uh, wasn't the person I sort of remembered and we just, He's a charmer. He made jokes. He laughed. He played with his Sounds like somebody else we know. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. And so we just we just spent the day. And we, just that afternoon, and from that moment on, what was really interesting is, you know, I think the process of healing is you eventually then have compassion and empathy where I started wondering, what did he go through? Yeah. What happened to him? What did his parents, yeah. you know, what did he receive as a child? Because um, I think he did his best. And I think we all sort of have these tools that we do our best with. Mm -hmm. I remember... You know, this this woman I was dating at the time, she noticed very clearly, like a load had been taken off my wow. back. Um, and it just started the healing process. And now we have a relationship, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's and, fantastic. And you know, I touched on the work that you've done in Puerto Rico, helping people. You are part of the nonprofit Heart 9-11, which yeah. aids response efforts in natural disasters. Uh, the gentleman, the founder of the organization, Bill Keegan, had this to say about you. He said, he just wants to do things for people on a very personal level. He gets it. He saw suffering and pain like we did, and he said, I think I can help, and I have to. That's what he said about you. In 2017, when Puerto Rico yeah. was really devastated by Hurricane Maria, I have a firefighter friend that I grew up with that volunteered with them, and he introduced me to this organization. I went down to the island and saw the work they were doing. Yeah. They were rebuilding homes, and then they had this concept of developing a pre-apprentice program where they teach the locals carpentry wow. so that they can help themselves. So it's not just about going and throwing Right, money. it's teaching, yeah, yeah, I love that. Okay, before we let you go, I, I said a lot of people may not know you also have, you play basketball. Yeah. Uh, you had a scholarship, that's him, point guard at Wheeling Jesuit University in West Virginia. And while you were playing, uh, you were here in New York, and yeah. someone from Nike discovered you and put you in front of the camera. Yeah. yeah. Right? Um, we have some footage of you <laughs> on the basketball court. Your hairstyle has changed it's a little, a little but take a look. What? It's like another lifetime Wait, I think, when I see I, that. I, I it's think, like I feel another like lifetime. 500 lives. Like, that's you rocking the cornrows. I used corn to have long cornrows down here. I used to sleep with my basketball. I mean, it was my life. It, it paid my college. Wow. Like, it, made, it really changed my life. Well, you're changing and helping lives of so many in Puerto Rico, and you're giving us great entertainment. I love it. You're the kind of guy, dare to be different, and that's why you're winning. We're so happy you As are. As are you. Thank you. Listen, you can catch new episodes of Will Trent on ABC Tuesday. Thank you. I'm going to have to play Who's with you next time. <laughs>